Bradford have turned, it's got like one of the biggest Asian minorities in this country. 20% of people in, in Bradford are from an Asian, Asian background, but they're only in a majority in three wards of the city, one of which being here, one of which being the city ward, and one of which being Bradford Mall. Why do you think they settled here in this particular area? Oh, yeah, just... Yeah, textile industry. So Bradford was incredibly prosperous at that time. There was a lot of work and not enough people to do it. So many people settled in this area. Do you think accommodation in this area was cheap? Yeah. It was dirt cheap. It was very, very cheap because this was the, 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 the cheapest part of the city to live in. Yeah, so most people came here to work in the textile mills. Although no one ever said that this was the case, in effect, white British people were given the day shift from like nine in the morning to five in the evening Irish people were given the first night shift from five in the evening till the middle of the night and black and Asian people were given the shift from the middle of the night till the early morning. In the 1970s all of that changed as industry collapsed here in Yorkshire as we started to import cloth much cheaper from abroad from the Far East the whole time the whole atmosphere in Bradford changed. A young African Caribbean boy was murdered here on this corner. It was the first time that uh, a real meaningful racist attack had ever taken place and it ended up with a murder. The problem is this, like, you know, what, you know, take for instance uh, me here. Like, I come from what you might call a Muslim background. I might be a member in some sense of the Asian community, but I haven't been to a mosque since I was old enough to stop my parents dragging me into one. Just like a lot of people who are Christians on paper, there are a lot of people who are Muslims on paper who it's cultural for them, you know what I mean? Their family do stuff, they do, maybe they believe in something here and there, but it's the, um, the idea that just because you're a Muslim, it means if an Imam tells you something, you're gonna listen and you'll always be at mosque and stuff like that, is as silly as thinking that just because the Pope says Catholics shouldn't use condoms, no Catholics use condoms. You get me? Of course that's not true. Of course these other things are true. So what we're gonna invite you guys to do is have a look inside one of these terrifying Islamic bookshops and see what you make of it, okay? So, you guys have all been in the Living Islam Islamic Superstore Bookshop, which is supposed to be a bit of a scary place, full of extremist, terrorist literature, whatnot. There's like one or two bookshelves of like serious theological, philosophical literature, and then there's a lot of stuff like the things you see in the window, yeah? Not very well designed or executed, quote unquote, artworks. So this is the first attempt to make a real Yorkshire stone mosque that would come, you know, would blend in with the kind of architecture that you see around you. So this is made out of stone quarried in Bradford in the Victorian Edwardian period went to make a lot of the old churches, a lot of the old buildings of civic pride, for instance the town hall and so on that you'll see, you'll, you'll have seen when we've been walking around. Uh, just like these buildings around, it is from Bradford and for the people of Bradford. start to get Jewish immigration back into Britain, particularly people fleeing anti-Semitic attacks, pogroms as they're known, in Eastern Europe. Now, this is a very interesting, in the first case, can you tell me what this language is across the top here? Hebrew. 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 Right, Hebrew, yeah, it is, the language that the Old Testament was written in and so on. Who can tell me what the traditional greeting a Muslim gives to another Muslim is? Assalamu alaikum, which means, peace be upon you, may you go in peace, yeah? Assalamu alaikum. In Hebrew, the traditional greeting, which means exactly the same thing, is Shalom Aleichem. But the first ever, ever halal restaurant in this country is right here. The in Swiss Pizza hey. in this country, wow. the infamous <laughs> Sweet Saint Hotel. Try one. Okay. Okay. 
Samuel Cunliffe Lister was a famous like wealthy industrialist mill owner and so on. And this statue's been built for him because he he donated some money to help build this park, to build the art gallery, Cartwright Hall that's on the other side of it. That the Lister family didn't just own the mills, they owned everything. They owned the mills, they owned the house the workers lived in, they owned the, um, the houses, they owned the shops where the workers went to go buy groceries and food and so on. When basically, the people who owned the mills got together and decided that they weren't making enough of a profit anymore. Now in this time, trade unions were kind of semi-legal, but you were only allowed to join them if you were involved in certain guilds. So you could only join them if you had, as it were, a trade. People at Manningham decided to organise against that. And in fact, this whole area was sealed off by barricades. And people formed what at the time called citizens' militias, yeah? The British Army was called in and they drove military uh, vehicles and so on through barricades, smashed their way into the mills and sent people back to work.